In 1964, the first Japanese-born player made his way onto a Major League Baseball roster. Masanori Murakami was signed by the San Francisco Giants from the Nankai Hawks in Japan's Nippon Professional Baseball League. He performed well with a 3.43 earned run average in the short time he played here before returning home. Since then, Japan has produced many great talents, like Ichiro, who owns the record for the most hits in baseball history, with 4,367 hits over his 28-year professional career. Or Hideo Nomo, the famous Dodger pitcher who won a Rookie of the Year award to go along with his no-hitter he threw versus the Rockies in 1996. Fast forward to 2024, the greatest player in the entire sport is Japanese, and perhaps the most talented player the world has ever seen, Shohei Otani, recently made major headlines in the sports world when he signed a 10-year $700 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Other current players like Yu Darvish, Kodai Senga, Kenta Maeda, and newly signed Yoshinobu Yamamoto have all become household names among baseball fans. There was one player, however, who never quite lived up to the high expectations set for them. A player who was brought into the biggest organization in baseball to bolster an already star-studded first-place team with incredible tools, including a 98-mile-per-hour fastball with an ability to dot pitches wherever he wanted. That player was Hideki Irabu. In 1997, Irabu arrived in New York City, baseball's mecca, to become the first Japanese player to wear the pinstripes. He was signed to a four-year contract worth $12.8 million, a fairly large contract at the time. A year prior, the San Diego Padres were the first to buy Irabu's contract from the Chiba Lot Marines, his NPB club. However, he refused to sign with the Padres, claiming the Yankees were the only team he wanted to play for. The hype was real for Hideki, that refusal endeared himself to the tough New York fans, and even the mayor of New York caught a pitch from him on the steps of City Hall. In his first start against the Tigers, he drew in twice the amount of television viewers and struck out nine batters while only giving up two runs. Call on strike three. Strikeout number nine. For Hideki Arabu. The next three starts did not go nearly as well for him, giving up five runs to the Indians, then six to the Brewers, and five more to the Mariners. He was quickly sent down to the Miners to retool his game before finishing the season in a split role between starting and relief pitching. He ended that season with an awful 7.12 ERA, and the same fans who learned Japanese words to cheer him on when he first arrived in the Bronx, were calling for his removal from the team. There were claims that Hideki would smoke after every half inning during his starts, and he had eating problems, which caused him to become more and more out of shape. Hideki did have his moments in the next few years, posting better numbers overall, hovering between a four and five ERA, and even winning AL Pitcher of the Month in May 1998. It just wasn't enough. He was brought here from Japan with solid numbers and stuff that resembled the great Nolan Ryan, but he couldn't put it all together. The large price tag didn't help Hideki either. How could you give $12 million to Hideki Arabo? Order! In 1999, he was traded to the Expos. The change of scenery didn't seem to help as he managed to get worse in the following years. In 2003, he returned to Japan to finish off his career with the Hanshin Tigers, capping off a troubled, difficult career for Irabu. Hideki was never fully liked by his home country or in the U.S. He was known to be short with press, oftentimes refusing to speak with them. He even had issues with press in his home country and would frequently fly home to answer questions at the request of Yankees GM Brian Cashman to quench the thirst of reporters. There was also a language barrier for Hideki. Even though his biological father was American, he never knew him growing up, and this hurt him. He claimed that he wanted to join the Yankees, the world's biggest ball club, for the simple fact that the more popular he became, 
the more likely his biological father, Steve Thompson, an Air Force meteorologist, would acknowledge him and possibly come back into his life. Being half Japanese, but growing up in Japan was punishing for Hideki. He was bullied for looking different than the rest of the kids, and he never truly felt Japanese even though it was his home country. After hearing his story, one could understand why Hideki turned to his vices once he became a figure in America. A troubled young man, he had to deal with media on both sides of the world. Fans who hated him and having no true connection with himself, it was no wonder why his performance on the field went downhill. Baseball was Hideki's true calling. Although he may not have shown it in his training and on-field play, baseball was all he really had for himself. It was his escape from the mental battles he faced all his life. He once said that if he had not found baseball in his youth, he believed he would have joined the Yakuza, the Japanese crime syndicate known to recruit youth with troubled lives. After his career, Hideki found himself in trouble with the law on multiple occasions in 2008 for assaulting a bartender in Japan and a DUI in 2010 in California. Unfortunately, in 2011, Hideki passed away to a reported suicide, leaving behind his wife and two children. His close friends claimed he was always heavily medicated in those final few years of his life, an ill-fated ending to a problematic, melancholic life. An important story to remember is that athletes aren't always the superstar personas we see on TV, and that just like us, have problems of their own.